Wow, these guys actually did it seven in a row. Seven in a row. Seven wins in a row for Conte's boys. Seven wins in a row for Inter. Top of the table for the moment being. And now, all Interisti, what we're going to do, we're going to tune in to the AC Milan versus Lazio match. Lazio, I know we sometimes we make fun of you guys. I make fun of you, I call you Nazio. But today, you guys have to come through Immobile, Leiva, you know, all, all you man, Pepe Reina, guys, just come through, get the result. But anyway, focusing on Inter, 2-1 victory against Hellas Verona, and it was not easy. Hellas Verona are a hella hard team to play, as we've always seen against the last year. We struggled against them, and all the big teams this year have struggled against them. They drew against Juve, they beat Atalanta, they beat Roma, well, on paper, but they drew against them. Um, they, drew, they beat Lazio as well, I believe, we drew against them. So this is not an easy team and Inter managed to beat them at their ground. Um, it was not a pretty match once again. So that first half was another dreary match and it was a surprise move by Antonio Conte going for the 3-4-2-1. In the pre-match, there was a lot of rumours going around that there could be a 3-4-2-1. And a lot of the times I don't believe him because especially when it comes to changing formation, I don't believe it when it comes to Conte, but he actually did change formation. It was Perisic and Martinez playing in behind Lukaku, which, you know, in theory could make sense. And this is probably, in terms of Perisic, this is the most close to his actual position that we got this season. Because this year he's been playing either left wing back or as a striker, which are both not his positions. So today, in theory, in theory, it should have been his position. But Perisic, very disappointing. You know, I know a lot of you guys, <laughs> I'm probably one of the few out there that expect something from Perisic, you know. I, I do. I did watch a bit of Bayern Munich last year, and I saw Perisic was still a decent player. But you know, you have to give him credit for you know changing positions, putting hard work in every time he plays. But the quality is just not there. You know, he lost the ball in the first half. I checked. He lost the ball ten times, and he only had like twenty touches. So half the time he touched the ball, he lost the ball. We had a fifty-three percent pass accuracy, very poor. But in general, Inter in the first half were poor. That formation didn't look like it quite worked. That the ball wasn't sticking to Lukaku or Lautaro who also you know missed the chance but Verona on the other hand didn't create much either so it was a bit of a stalemate first half but this Inter team this is made for second half this year it's the opposite of the Inter team from the previous year from the previous season where we we've just spoke about this before that we used to start you know with a flash with a bang and then you know fizzle out but this Inter team is the opposite it maybe starts off a bit slow a bit lethargic doesn't create much but the second half even without any substitutions really it got really it was much better you know chances were being created in the end Inter ended up with 60% possession uh, 18 shots on goal five on target compared to Verona's only six so in, in all in all you know we, we managed to nullify Verona who did get unlucky with a few injuries in the defense that they had to make but man of the match even though he didn't score, it has to be Lukaku for me. The way how he worked so hard up front, like it was crazy. It's, it's pretty close actually. It's not so clear to Lukaku. It's between Hakimi and Lukaku to me. Hakimi, he was the reason that in the second half we, you know, we, we, the match changed. You know the way he started to run at Di Marco. Who Di Marco, we know he's a good player going forward, but defensively he can be a bit suspect. A little bit similar to Hakimi. And Hakimi in the second half coming from deep, you know, starting to get those balls finally, not just, uh, you know, we've talked about before how only Sanchez seems to be the one giving those balls to Hakimi, but finally everyone's understanding that you give those long balls to Hakimi into the space and he will create havoc, he will create, you know, danger, he will create chances. First goal for Lautaro, Hakimi's cross. Lautaro, you know, we'd be criticising his finishing, but that was a good finish on the volley, not an easy one, directed it perfectly into the corner. Uh, seventh goal this season, I believe, in uh, in this uh, in this season. So we expected a bit more from Luke, uh, from Lautaro this season, but he's still there. He's not he's not been a shoddy season, but we expect a bit higher. Hopefully, after this break, recharge the batteries, he can come back even stronger. And Hakimi, in general, was creating havoc all all along the, the that right wing. Him and Lukaku in the second half with with a big catalyst to that change. Lukaku had a few amazing runs, you know, one v one. He was eating up guys, he was eating up fouls, and I don't know how he didn't end up with a goal. To be honest, he had the chance right at the end that well, he scored at the end, but it was taken off for a little foul, which was a bit harsh, I think. And then Hakimi almost, you know, he almost connected with Hakimi's cross, and then he had some other few chances here and there. But I don't know how Lukaku didn't end up with a goal. It would have been it would have been deserved. Um, and then the second goal. Milan Skriniar, 
his first goal since February 2018 against Benevento. Like this, this has been so long. It's been since the Spalletti days that this guy hasn't scored, and it was such an important goal, perfectly guided, great cross from Brozovic. Brozovic was up and down. You know, his his match as usual. You know, his his, his physical condition that we spoke about in the last few matches is going down. But credit to him and both him and Barella who weren't great today in this new 3-4-2-1 formation. It doesn't really work for them either. So credit where it's due, but it wasn't the greatest match from our midfielders. On the other side, Ashley Young was at fault for the goal we conceded with letting Faraoni go past him. But then obviously, Samir Handanovic, man. How many times do we have to say, you know, this guy is absolutely dusted. This guy is so sad to see, but I don't want to even dwell on it too much, but completely at fault for that goal, a goal out of nothing for Verona, you know, they didn't even have a great shot on goal for the whole match and that's the goal that created from Handanovic dropping the ball from Faraoni's cross and, uh, you know, I saw people, few and people online blaming Skriniar, but what can Skriniar do there? Handanovic literally just blobbed the ball right in front of him and uh, Verona struck, took advantage. But apart from that, the defence was pretty good, you know, we hardly let any shots on goal. Ashley Young, as I said, shaky once again, left wing back. Left wing back is a must for the January transfer window. Let's see who comes in, but it's a must. It's a must, must. And obviously a Lukaku vice. But yeah, overall, what can I say, guys? We're first in the table. Hopefully Lazio do us a favor. Let's see what happens. Mine and Tommaso's prediction from yesterday, if you didn't catch the preview, we predicted a 2-1 victory and we got that right. We didn't quite get the Vidal goal. We did get a header on, but didn't quite go in. But yeah, very happy. Inter keeping us, keeping us going. Wishing everyone a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year if I don't see you guys. But I'll probably be making videos through this uh, through this Christmas period because I'll be off work. Uh, but obviously, no, no Serie A. But Inter News will always keep us entertained. And yeah, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao ragazzi.